Summer Owens was a Delta Airlines flight attendant. In June 2018, she put her brand new uniform on and went to work. The purple plum line had been designed by famous designer Zach Posen and manufactured by Land's End. Over 100 different articles have been distributed to over 60,000 Delta employees. Almost as soon as Summer put it on, she noticed issues. Redness and swelling of the skin, and the apron left purple residue on the back of her neck. She wasn't alone. Thousands of other Delta employees experienced symptoms which varied in type and severity from skin issues like blisters, boils, and hives, to nosebleeds, ringing ears, migraines, muscle weakness, and respiratory distress. One said, I noticed right away after I put the uniforms on that I had shortness of breath, and I've been a runner my whole life. I don't smoke or anything like that, so when I couldn't get up the stairs without being extremely winded, I knew there was some sort of problem. Many of the employees weren't immediately sure what was wrong. Some went to doctors and were instructed to bring EpiPens to work as a precaution. But it wasn't long before the uniforms were identified as the problem. You see, several other airlines had suffered similar cases. It had started with Alaskan Airlines back in 2011. Their employees were issued new uniforms manufactured by the corporation Twin Hill, resulting in skin and eye issues, headaches, fatigue, hair loss, breathing problems, and symptoms of thyroid dysfunction. One flight attendant, whose name was withheld for privacy, had facial rashes so bad they swelled and crusted her eyes with pus. Later, she was diagnosed with three autoimmune diseases. When the employees filed a class action lawsuit against Twin Hill, Alaskan recalled the uniforms. Lab testing revealed various toxic heavy metals, carcinogenic dispersion dyes banned in the EU, biocides, and tributyl phosphate, a known endocrine disruptor. However, none of these chemicals could be proven as the cause of the injuries, and in 2016, Twin Hill won the lawsuit. That same year, they also delivered new uniforms to American Airlines. The Allied Pilots Association had asked American not to select Twin Hill as the manufacturer due to their issues with Alaskan and similar reports from UPS and NetJet workers, but they were ignored. The same health problems started immediately. Rashes, open sores, vomiting, migraines, breathing distress, hair loss, and endocrine issues. According to a report by the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, there had been zero skin disorder complaints in the company's OSHA logs the previous year. After the new uniforms, thousands of complaints were filed with the airline, 500 within the first week. So in 2017, American Airlines employees entered their own lawsuit against Twin Hill. The difference between them and the Alaskan employees was a matter of luck. A research group from Harvard University's T.H. Chan School of Public Health happened to have been conducting a study on the Alaskan Airlines employees between 2011 and 2015, before, during, and after use of the Twin Hill uniforms. They found direct correlations between the time period during which the uniforms were in use and adverse health effects. Four American Airlines plaintiffs have already won over a million dollars from Twin Hill, and there are hundreds of cases still to be tried. Next, it happened with Southwest Airlines, whose employees were issued uniforms manufactured by Cintas. These uniforms were called EcoWare and advertised as 100% recycled polyester produced entirely from post-consumer waste. They have tested positive for benzyl alcohol, formaldehyde, and heavy metals including chromium, arsenic, mercury, and lead, among other toxins. Symptoms were similar to those of the other cases and included cancer. So when Summer Owens reported her issues to Delta, she was eventually allowed to purchase her own off-the-rack uniform, but she still experienced symptoms when in the sky with her uniformed co-workers. Then Delta started pressuring her to wear a gray version of the uniform, also from Land's End. When she capitulated, her symptoms erupted tenfold. She experienced skin peeling, nausea, diarrhea, and vomiting, forcing her to call out sick more than she previously had. A couple of months later, she was fired for, quote, reliability issues. Later that year, she was diagnosed with mycosis fungoides, a type of T-cell lymphoma cancer. Since Delta employees were not unionized, many were afraid to speak out publicly, and the airline fought against their attempts to organize. 
Dr. Irina Mordakovich of the Harvard Health Group said Delta refused to allow them to come in and study the problem. In 2019, Delta employees filed a lawsuit against Land's End. It's still pending, as is the case from Southwest employees against Cintas. Most of the airlines mentioned now offer uniforms certified by Okotex, a private testing entity. So what was wrong with all these uniforms? Well, seemingly everything and nothing at the same time. On the one hand, the uniforms were water and stain repellent, anti-wrinkle, anti-fungal, and anti-odor. In other words, they were given some of the newest and strongest chemical treatments on the market. Testing revealed an enormous range of toxins. On the other hand, it didn't point to one as a smoking gun. Most of the toxins were found in concentrations too low to be expected to cause the reported symptoms. One problem is that the testing is severely limited. Researchers have to choose specific chemicals to test for, so there is never a full picture. When Intertech tested the American Airlines uniforms, they reported, quote, unknown chemicals, which they said probably included volatile organic compounds. Manufacturers are constantly trying to distinguish themselves by coming up with new chemical treatments for clothes. It's similar to drug testing in sports. Those developing and applying the drugs will always be ahead of the testers. The other issue is that testing does not take into account chemical combinations. So while individual toxins may be present in quote-unquote safe amounts, their added or combined effects are disregarded or completely unknown. The number of combinations that would have to be analyzed to thoroughly account for even one piece of something like an airline uniform could be astronomical. The other obvious factor is that flight attendants are a special group. They experience a particular range of physiological stresses, like recycled air, engine exhaust, and disrupted circadian rhythms. Research has shown they have higher cancer incidence than the general population. Plus, they practically live wearing their uniforms in a closed environment. So they should be expected to show symptoms before other groups. It's an example of why, in order to determine chemical safety, occupational exposure is so often studied. Members of other uniform jobs, like TSA and UPS, have also reported issues. So, is there a mystery chemical or chemical combination being manufactured into these uniforms? Or are uniformed workers, like flight attendants, simply the perfect guinea pigs for high doses of chemicals also sold to the general public? The answer is unclear. You might be wondering if manufacturers are allowed to put whatever they want into clothing. In the USA, at the federal level, apart from some minor and highly specific requirements around flame retardants, lead, and phthalates, there are zero regulations which oversee chemicals in imported clothing which is around 97% of U.S. purchases.